There is a team right now that is slaying giants in its country's domestic cup, and there is a better than good chance you've probably never heard of this team, and that's okay. But if you're into David versus Goliath stories in the world of football, stick around. I've got a good story for you. You should be surprised. Like, if Sabrican would win this, this would be huge. The US Open Cup kicks off this week, inspiring a new wave of Davids looking to slay American Goliaths. We've already seen some cup sets this week, inspiring me to go looking for other Davids in other countries that have shocked their country's top competitions. And I didn't have to look very far. In fact, I didn't even have to look beyond this year for an epic David slaying Goliath story. And when I say Goliath, I mean Goliath. And this movie already has a couple of sequels and is threatening to add two more to its already impressive trilogy. And the crazy thing is, this club has pulled off this stunt before. In fact, just within the last five years. We're going to Germany. Actually, hold up. We're actually going to a part of Germany that was a part of France after World War II, after Germany occupied France, and then France a few years later decided to give this land back to Germany. And oh, by the way, did I mention this part of Germany it used to be its own realm for a while in the 1900s? I just had a stroke. And we're taking you to Saarbrücken. More specifically, 1FC Saarbrücken. Absolutely huge. Even going back in history, um, the last year that the DFB Cup was won by a team that was not out of the Bundesliga was in 1992, and that was Hanover 96. So this would be absolutely huge for German football if Saarbrücken was going to lift the cup. Saarbrücken is exceptionally unexceptional, a small club smack dab in the middle of the third tier of German football. It's not going up. It's not going down, it's right in the middle, basically Goldilocks. Now this is a team that does have some Bundesliga history, notice the emphasis on some, but first, in order to tell the tale of FC Saarbrücken, we have to take a detour into France because Saarbrücken actually played in France for a season. This quirk happened because Saarland was occupied by France for a time after World War II. FC Saarbrücken became known as FC Saarbrück as they played in the French second division in 1948. Now this is where this story gets spicy. They actually were promoted to the French top division in their first season in France, but the other French clubs were having none of that after World War II, most notably Strasbourg, who were previously forced to play in the German leagues during World War II due to the Nazi occupation of France. They had the biggest voice against Saarbrücken being promoted, period. So Saarbrück responded by taking their ball and going back to Germany, becoming a team of nomads without a league for a little bit, traveling around playing exhibition type of matches until they eventually rejoined German football in 1952 in the Oberliga Südwest. Now Saarbrücken sent 10 players to Saarland who actually almost qualified for the 1954 World Cup. In their qualification group they finished ahead of Norway but behind West Germany, no surprise there, and Saarland missed out on making World Cup history. Now Saarbrücken remained a strong club, strong enough to be a part of the inaugural Bundesliga season that kicked off in 1963. This was West Germany's first foray into a fully professional league, and Saarbrücken finished dead last. And when I say dead last, I mean look for yourself. See, you're not alone Sheffield United fans. Saarbrücken would return to the Bundesliga for a couple of seasons in the late 70s, once again in 1986, and once more in 1993, but they haven't been back at that level since, partly because a financial crisis in 1995 caused Saarbrücken to lose its license and get dropped to the third tier, and has spent the time since then bouncing around anywhere from the second division to the fifth division. Now that we've gotten familiar with the history of this formerly French football club, let's talk about more recent history. Now keep this in mind as I talk about their dream run in the DFB Pokal this season. Again, this is a club that only a few years ago returned to the third tier of German football. They spent six seasons in the mid to late 2010s in the fourth tier of German. 
German football. And this is a club that has only flirted with the idea of going up to the second division the prior four seasons and are no threat to pull that off this season. Exceptionally unexceptional. Except in Germany's domestic cup. When Saarbrücken kicked off its DFB Pokal campaign this past August, they beat second division Karlsruhe 2 to 1. Okay, a bit of an upset over a mid-table team one division above them, but nothing to get overly excited about. Certainly not wild enough to do this video months later. But excitement would come in the second round of the DFB Pokal, when the exceptionally unexceptional FC Saarbrücken welcomed the Giants, the Giants, the undisputed Giants of German football, Bayern Munich, into their town. It started as your typical Bayern match, Thomas Muller scoring a goal in the 16th minute to put the Giants of German football up 1-0 over the minnows of Saarland. And most would be forgiven in just expecting Bayern to just crush little Saarbrücken under its big foot. Well, this is why you don't play football matches on paper. You play them on the field. Patrick Sontheimer tied the game up right before halftime on a goal that could only be described as a complete and utter calamity by Munich. Just watch for yourself. Now it should be noted that Bayern did not rotate its squad at all for this match, starring the likes of world superstars like Manuel Neuer, Matthias De Ligt, Leon Goretzka, Jamal Musiala, the aforementioned Muller, Leroy Sané, and a guy you may have heard of in England, Harry freaking Kane. Such a weird football year, if you will, where Harry Kane comes to Bayern and they don't win a title. Audacious, right? Almost as audacious as thinking Bayern wasn't going to just get the go-ahead goal in the second half or, at worst, extra time. But none of that happened. That's because Marcel Gauss had the audacity to score a 96-minute game winner completely against the run of the entire game. Just look at this play. It was a heck of a run set up by Sevilla to set up Gauss, who got some fortune to have the ball deflect and skip over Neuer, who basically just collapsed and died right afterwards. And this sent Saarbrücken, and probably most of Saarland for that matter, into dreamland. Okay, great. Cup upsets happen, and Bayern was months before this video was recorded, so what's so special about Saarbrücken now? Why don't you ask Eintracht Frankfurt, another strong German top division club, quite probably playing in Europe next season, they became another victim of this little Saarland club. Now, Frankfurt walked into Ludwig Sparkstadion on December 6th and walked out on the wrong end of a 2-0 defeat. And unlike the Bayern game, they got their asses handed to them. Kai Brunker and Lucas Kerber were the audacious Saarbrücken scorers, and while they conceded 61% of possession to Frankfurt, Saarbrücken's XG of 1.35 was more than one over Frankfurt's, suggesting Saarbrücken truly earned this one, or depending on your point of view, maybe asking questions about whether Frankfurt's bus actually ever arrived to Saarland. Okay, Bayern, gone. Frankfurt, gone. Are you still not impressed yet? Well, there's one more Bundesliga team to add to Saarbrücken's impressive body count in the Pokal. Borussia Mönchengladbach. Wow, am I glad my German ancestry is coming through big on this video. And this one just happened a little over a week before this video was recorded. And unlike the Frankfurt game, this one more closely resembled the Bayern game, right down to how Saarbrücken won it. Gladbach scored right away with a Robin Hack goal in the 8th minute. This time, though, Saarbrücken responded just 3 minutes later when Amin Naifi tied it up. But to complete the third Bundesliga upset in this epic trilogy, Kai Brunker came up big for Saarbrücken again, scoring a 93rd minute winner to advance to the semi-finals. Now this is an absolutely impressive run for this third tier club that no one could see coming, not even our friend Sasha. 
but maybe we should have because this is actually the second time in just five seasons that this little team that could made it to the semifinals of Germany's domestic cup. They did it in the 2019-2020 season when they were still in the fourth tier of German football. They would be promoted next year. They were the first team to go this far while this low on the German pyramid, though their path was easier that year. They beat second division foes Jan Ragensburg, FC Nuremberg, and Karlsruhe again. And they did beat one Bundesliga team, but it would be soon to be relegated Fortuna Dusseldorf. But they needed 10 rounds of penalties to do so. Now back to this year, and the drama is far from over for Little Saarbrücken. Three Bundesliga clubs are not enough. They need to beat a second division club and quite probably another big Bundesliga club to hoist the DFB Pokal this season. Now it should be easy, right? To get to the finals after being Bayern, Frankfurt, and Gladbach, right? Well, their opponent in the semifinals, and you seriously cannot write this is their fierce, local-ish rivals, Kaiser Slautern. Ask any Saarbrücken fan, Kaiser Slautern might be their fiercest rival in all of German football, and they have not faced Kaiser Slautern in two years. And if Saarbrücken beat their fierce rivals, they would likely face the same team that knocked them out of the 2020 semifinals in the Pokal, a certain little club known as Bayer Leverkusen. And wouldn't it be something if the similar fairy tale of Xabi Alonso's Leverkusen side on pace for a historic and quite possible treble were to have a tragic ending in the Pokal if Germany's version of Cinderella stops them in the final and makes history of their own. There is no domestic cup in the world that has the drama of the DFB Pokal this year. Now these things are just fun to think about. After all, that's what domestic cups like this are for. It's what the US Cup is for. The Dreamers. And this is why we're upset with the MLS over how it's treating America's domestic cup. Because the league wants to kill dreams like the one Sarbrooken is having right now. And if you kill dreams like this, what else do you have left in soccer? Piles of money? Sure, but at what cost of your own soul? That is not why we're fans. We are fans because we dream. And it is okay to dream even in 2024. Let Saarbrücken be a reminder of why we dream. I don't think the strength of the pyramid really matters much when we talk about cup competitions such as the US Open Cup or the DFB Pokal because in German we have this saying der Pokal hat seine eigenen Gesetze which literally means the cup has its own laws. Thank you to Sasha Fox of Addiction Football for adding a German perspective to the Saarbrücken story. He's actually here in America now touring soccer games at all levels this year on his motorcycle and he actually just got done watching an open cup set of his own. Speaking of surprises in cup competitions, I salute you from Chattanooga, Tennessee, where local Chattanooga FC got beat by lower league Miami United. Now you can check out that video on the top corner of the screen or in the description below and make sure to follow his channel if you are looking for a German perspective on the U.S. game. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, of course, tell your friends about it and make sure to comment below. If you're a Saarbrücken fan, let me know if there's anything I missed or if you felt that I served your team appropriately. Is there anything else that I might have gotten wrong or maybe I butchered a pronunciation? Let me know about that too. I don't mind. I'm your soccer zombie, Tom. Franklin reminding you to always have the audacity to dream.